Hello everybody, my name is Cookie, and I'm a competitive Splatoon player from Australia. This is the ultimate guide to Splat Zones in Splatoon 3, where you'll learn how the pros play to win. Splat Zones is the most popular Anarchy mode, and is probably the easiest to learn if you're just getting started with Ranked. But if you want to excel in this mode, you'll need to know which plays to make, and how to coordinate them with your team. Today, you'll learn the fundamental strategy of zones, in addition to common mistakes you might be making, and some effective weapons and compositions. And if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more guides like this and to support the channel. First, let's go over how to play zones. If you already know how to play, feel free to skip ahead. Splat Zones is a game of area control, like Turf War but condensed in the middle of the map. This is the Splat Zone. The objective is to score points by keeping it painted with your team's ink for as long as possible. When you're in control, your score will tick down over time, starting from 100. If you hit 0, you win instantly, but if time runs out, the team with the lowest score wins. Of course, the other team will be fighting to control the zone too. Painting over half the zone will neutralize it, meaning neither team has control and no points are scored. Painting over 3 quarters of it will take it for your team. If you lose control of the zone, a penalty score, equal to 3 quarters of the points you earned since last taking control, will be applied, which goes down before your actual score. This is supposed to punish you for losing control by forcing you to do extra work before you can score again. Some maps have two zones, and you'll need to keep them both painted to be in control. As you can see, you only need to neutralize one zone to stop the timer. Finally. The game will enter overtime if the losing team, the one with the higher score count, is in control or loses control less than 10 seconds before time runs out. Overtime ends if control stays neutral for 10 seconds, or the winning team takes control back, or the losing team takes the lead, therefore winning the game. This gives the losing team one final chance to snag the victory. Alright, it's time to learn the fundamental strategy of zones. By that, I mean the way the pros think when they're playing to win. While the rules of the mode are quite simple, it's often hard to understand the general flow of the match and what you should be doing at any given time. So first, let's talk about what it means to push in Splatoon. You might have heard this term thrown around before, but not many people explain what it really means. Imagine if your team and the enemy team literally just played the objective for the entire match with no strategy at all. Simply shooting the zone, panning over each other. Neither team scores any points, neither team has an advantage over the other, and neither team's doing anything to try and get an advantage. We call this the neutral game. Splat zone strategy is about what you do to break that stalemate. If you're always at equal footing with the other team, what will you and your team do to get an edge, take control, and secure it for long enough to score lots of points? That is what a push is a concentrated, aggressive effort by your whole team to break that stalemate and advance on your opponents. To fulfill the objective of controlling the zone, you need to think about how you're going to push the enemy away so you can actually do that. To push in Splatoon, you need to overwhelm the other team to the point where they're forced to fall back. Otherwise, you'll keep throwing stuff at each other and nothing will change. Let's take a look at how we do this in Splat Zones. Before you can start a push, your team has to not only be alive, but also holding their ground. There's a reason zones matches usually start with a stalemate neutral in mid, and that's because if you overextend and die, or decide to back down, you're giving your opponents an advantage for free, and that's the opposite of what you want. At all times during the match, you need to hold a position as far forward as possible, to the point where if you go any further, you're at risk of dying. Since the enemy will be doing the same thing, if they're smart, you could draw a line through the map that defines the area you can safely move up to. In neutral, you need to hold that line by painting and staying safe until you're ready to push it forward, so that only you have control of the zone. So now that you're holding your ground, how do you create an opening for a push? Well, the obvious way is to kill enemies. It's the most efficient way to weaken the other team for a good amount of time. The problem is that this is usually difficult to do in neutral, especially in high level play, since both teams are playing just as carefully as each other. So if you want to get some key kills without using too many resources, you'll need some good positioning and coordination with your teammates to take them out in 2v1s. Remember, good players win 1v1s, great players win 2v1s. 
Of course though, that's not always possible, especially during hard stalemates. So the main way to create openings is by using specials. Specials are the backbone of any push in Splatoon because they're so powerful. And hey look, you've been charging it up during all that painting in the neutral game. That's right, during neutral, everyone is building towards their specials, so it's only a matter of time before an opportunity arises to start a push. Remember, you're trying to overwhelm them with pressure, so don't just use your specials on your own to try to get kills. Force them to retreat, make them choose between dying and running away. Coordinate your specials with your teammates to make that push even more effective. And, most importantly, don't use all of your specials at the same time, or you won't have any left in case your attempt fails and you need to defend yourself. Staggering your special usage with your teammates is way better for your push, as you'll have resources to spare to keep up the pressure later, or to hold your ground again if you need to fall back. And on that note, keep an eye on which resources both teams have available at any given time. If your opponents use their specials but don't get much value out of them, that's a perfect opportunity to start your own push since they can't defend themselves. Likewise, if your attempt to push fails, be very wary of your team's lack of resources when a counterattack inevitably comes. Also, a great strategy to make pushing easier is to divert their attention so that they are less coordinated. This is where bomb poking and flanking come in. Lethal bombs are so good in this game because, again, they force you to choose between either leaving an area or dying. They used to keep enemies out of the positions they want to be in, for example, a charger at their favorite perch. So if you can displace enemies using bombs, specials will be much more effective at forcing a retreat, and it will be easier to get picks. Additionally, approaching enemies from a flank is an effective but risky method of getting picks by catching them by surprise. And if you can't get a pick, Simply diverting their attention and being a general nuisance while staying alive is a valid strategy to make pushes more effective. We call this skirmishing, if you've ever heard that term. Now that you know how to start a push, let's look at what to do once you get that advantage. Thankfully, the offensive strategy for zones is way simpler than in any other anarchy mode. Push up. When you create space, don't just camp the zone, Move up and take space as soon as possible, or else all that effort will be wasted. Pushing that line of control as far forward as possible leaves less room for your opponents to work with and forces them to work harder to get back in, which lets you score way more points. If you just sit on the zone once you have an advantage, you're letting them walk back up to it for free. It'll be easier for them to contest, and you won't score as many points. Think of it like in Turf War. You wouldn't just sit in mid the whole game, would you? It's way better to move forwards and take more ground to protect what you already have. It's the same in zones, but condensed. Once you've pushed up and your opponents have gotten back into position, you're basically back to that stalemate from before, except now you're scoring points, controlling more of the map, and you've got way more room to work with. It's no longer neutral, you're now on offense. Now you just gotta hold this position, and when possible, push again to make it even harder for them to counterattack. You should always try to keep the momentum of a push going for as long as possible, either by using more specials or continuing to displace or take out enemies, to get as much value out of your efforts as possible. And at some point, you won't need to, or straight up can't, move up anymore. You can just keep holding your ground and shutting down your opponents until you win. This is called a lockout but be careful not to let anyone sneak by you and grab the zone from behind your back. Now, what should you do if you're on the receiving end of a successful push? In other words, what should you do on defense when the enemy is scoring points and you're trying to get back in to stop them? The most important advice I can give is to be patient. Retreat only as much as is necessary to stay alive and somewhat in control, wait for your team to come back, and hold your ground to stop them from pushing any further. Once you've regained your footing, your team can prepare to make a push of their own using the same techniques as before. If you panic, get reckless, and start staggering in one after another to stop the enemy by any means possible, you'll just end up dying and giving them even more ground. So basically, it's the same strategy as on offense, but this time your goal is to retake the zone instead of solidifying your control. Keep in mind that, in most maps, 
you have more advantageous terrain when defending compared to attacking, in the form of height advantage and multiple routes out of spawn. Be sure to exploit the extra choices you get when deciding your next move. Choose your path wisely to regain control of your side of the map. And here's a tip for retaking the zone. You might recall that simply shooting the zone all day won't get you far if the enemy is painting at the same time. But if you paint it using a burst of ink, using stuff like bombs and specials, you'll be able to take it very quickly, even if it's just for a moment. This is super useful if you need to quickly flip the zone and slap a penalty on your opponent's score, or if you need to end overtime as soon as possible. There's a good video by Squid School that covers this topic of burst paint if you're interested. Let's take a look at which kinds of weapons and compositions work well in zones. You can of course play whatever you want and find success if you're skilled enough with the weapon, but there are obviously traits that are way more favorable than others for splat zones. Let's take a look at some of those traits. Stuff that paints. It's a mode about area control. You cannot go wrong with a weapon that paints really well, especially when you need to contest the zone with fewer active players. Most, if not all, shooters fall under this, in addition to some dualies, splatlings, and other weapons that have high paint output. There's a couple weapons that only have a great niche in the zones, such as the Explosher and Aerospray, purely because of their profound painting abilities. Stuff that can kill. While less important in zones than in other modes like Tower Control and Rainmaker, having a fast time to kill can help you win fights easier and set you up for pushes. The problem is that kill power usually comes at the expense of paint and speed, so if you're going to play a weapon like a roller, charger, or blaster that focuses on killing, you gotta be real good at your job or you're giving up paint for nothing. And stuff with range. Ranged weapons are king in splat zones, more so than any other anarchy mode. Longer ranged and slower weapons have an easier time here since the objective is stationary, and so are the points of interest. Weapons like Chargers, Splatlings, Tri-Stringer, Jet Squelcher, and I'd even say Explosher fits here. But again, be wary of weapons with high skill ceilings like E-Leader. You gotta be cracked to pull it out and expect to win consistently, or else you're just throwing. Now about weapon comps, which you should consider if you're playing in a 4 stack or in a tournament. I think in zones you really need a mix of short and long ranged weapons. Unlike modes like Rainmaker, where fully short ranged mobile comps are effective because you're always moving around, the objective is stationary in zones, which means having reduced mobility is less of an issue, and you can take advantage of your weapon's strengths. It's also super valuable to have a player using a charger or something always anchor the team down to let the frontliners push that line forwards under the safety of their watch. Of course, the comps you use are up to you, but please keep that in mind. And finally, here's some specials you should consider for your comps that are super effective at starting and maintaining pushes. Crab Tank, one of the game's most powerful specials, you can set yourself up in a safe vantage point and take control of an entire area for ages. It's extremely threatening, and enemies will rarely stay in your line of sight for long unless they have a death wish, a legitimate staple of any zones comp. So much so that running two of them is viable. You don't usually pop crab to paint with it though, it's more for the offensive pressure. Booyah Bomb. Same as crab tank, but it's used more like an initiation tool rather than a directly offensive force. It can make enemies scramble or retreat from an area, and can be used to reliably counter other specials. Again, not really used for the painting, unless you're desperate and really need to squeeze out a zone flip. Triple Ink Strike. Used more to keep a pusher's momentum going than to start one. They are really powerful, but since they're so short in duration, you rarely get much out of them by just throwing them out without a plan to follow up either by combining it with other specials, or by moving in to take advantage of your opponent's displacement. They can be used to help paint the zone with very quick bursts of ink, but only if you really need them. Wave Breaker. Like Tri-Strikes, it's used to help keep a push going in conjunction with other tactics. Wave Breaker forces opponents to choose between becoming an easier target by jumping, or taking damage and getting marked. It's super effective at making a space easier to take control of, and can help you extend pushes for long enough to score a bunch of points. Tenta Missiles. All reliable. 
pop them to force players to move from where they are, no matter the distance. You could probably see how this makes starting and extending pushes way, way easier. Go ahead, force your enemies to scramble for free and see how easy your pushes become. Zipcaster, a more niche choice. If you're good at your main weapon, you can use it to get picks or to force enemies out of position with the mere threat of your presence. Using it to cause a distraction is viable too. Remember, diverting enemies' attention can make pushes easier to get started. And finally, Reef Slider. Usually played out of necessity because it's on Tetras, but it's recently found a niche in being able to instantly capture, or at least neutralize, a zone. It's really good to use to get an edge in zone control stalemates, or to just chase up your prey if they start to run away. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck in Ranked, and be sure to like and subscribe for more guides like this in the future. I sincerely appreciate all the support I've gotten on this channel, and I hope you'll stay tuned for videos on the other Anarchy modes. This was your local Aussie top player, see you later.